welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. We are in the middle of a Maximum Apocalypse in Nuclear Fallout. That's the one we're currently playing. Robots are kind of taken over and there was a nuke that went off. We're playing a map that basically will start to uh, scrunch us down into the core tile in the middle here of the van. We're trying to repair it to get out of here. So let's get started with the first turn. I'm going to have the Gunslinger go first and then we're going to follow it up with the Mechanic, go back and forth. Uh, so far we have a gigantic 20 health robot here in front of us called uh, Omni shot as well as a robot scout. There was a ability here, a draw from the last video that I want to talk a little bit about. This one says place monster token, uh, place a monster token on all adjacent map tiles. Uh, after confirming this, uh, this would actually not be on any diagonal positions from us as the game only allows us to move orthogonally. So north, south, east, west is the only tiles that would actually get monster tokens. So it's not as bad as I originally thought. So that's good. We're going to start it off right now. We're going to keep track of our actions with the die that's not on the character card. The one that's on the character card is for the hunger level. So remember that. We're starting off with the gunslinger. We're going to use the turn reference here to remember what our turn order is. We'll start off by spawning monsters by rolling 2d6s and hoping we don't land the number 6 that's on the van tile. So we'll see how that goes. We got a seven, so we're safe, but I think that means a bad thing. Let me just double check here. It says, yes, it says right here, uh, the, whenever a seven is rolled during the monster spawn phase, reveal a tie on the outer edge of the map when a seven is rolled and all. So again, this is how we're triggering the fallout. We're already beginning it. So basically you can thematically think that the fallout has already begun. We can go ahead and pick an edge, uh, a tile on the edge here and reveal it. I'm going to pick something. We might as well do something we can get to, I think. So we'll go like this and reveal this one here. A bandit camp. Nice. So at least we know that's there. So that worked out in our favor because that's actually a nasty one. Uh, it says if we enter it, we discard an, equi uh, an equipped gear uh, or take five damage. So that's a really good one to reveal. That actually was nice. So we've done the spawning. That's can be put aside. Uh, we're now going to draw a card for our gunslinger. And we got a grenade. That's not bad. So the grenade here says deal one target uh, three damage and up to three other targets on the same tile two damage. That's going to come in handy, especially when we have these rebel scouts. Uh, or rebel. Did I just say rebel? I got Imperial Assault and Brain. Robot scouts. Uh, right up next to us. So let's put this in our hand. That's awesome. We've also got some really cool cards for this particular individual. We've got the Colt Pistol. Uh, we've got the Ranger Hat. Although if you're looking at the Ranger Hat, we remember uh, from the last video here that it has cool passive ability and equip ability, but it's only cool when you first equip it because you get to basically restore three health. And I don't want to do that yet because I don't have any damage. So we won't do that this turn. I think the most important thing to do probably is to get this Colt Pistol on us. We'll probably start with that. Um, I'm tempted to use the grenade too, but I'm also a little worried that, I don't know, I don't know, because we're always spawning monsters, and if we spawn more and they happen to land with us and I use the grenade too early, I want to use the grenade in a situation that makes sense, but I don't know, we'll see. Let's, I'm kind of just talking uh, off the cuff here, but anyway, we're going to use an action to equip the Colt Pistol. Comes with four ammunition, so we're gonna go ahead and grab four bullet tokens and throw them on the card. So we know we have three or four attacks basically uh, possible with this Colt. All right, so next up, we're going to probably do Red's Rage. Increase all damage by two until the end of the turn. So that's gonna make the last two actions, because now we've spent two, we have four total. We can spend two actions now to take two shots at this guy, putting a total of eight damage on him. Not bad. Uh, so I think that's probably what I'm going to do to start. So we're going to take two shots, which is two of these bullets, get rid of them, and then we're going to put eight total damage on uh, on this guy. So it's actually not a bad first hit, but it's certainly not uh, certainly not the biggest splash ever, but it's decent. Um, so we've done that. We're finished now. We've done all the actions. So we're going to go ahead and increase our hunger level to two. So we're getting a little bit more hungry. We have to remember we need to scavenge at some point in order to get some food so we don't... Uh, end up flipping our character card over. Uh, next up, we're going to decide whether we want to use any free actions. Um, I don't think I want to. I'm tempted, actually, to potentially discard two cards from my hand and maybe draw something from the deck. This one says at the end of your turn, draw a scavenge card for every enemy killed, or until the end of your turn. So that'd be good if I was ready to kill a bunch of people. I'll keep that. This one says, select another player to take an action right now. Eh. Sounds, I don't know, that one, that one I could, that one might be a discardable card right now, at least until the mechanic gets something better, but I really like the grenade and the ranger hat, so I like these three cards, I'm not going to do that free action of discarding two cards, um, 
We're also not going to trade anything to the mechanic because I don't think I think the mechanics cards by themselves are good enough. We won't do any of that. So we'll go ahead. We increase our, our our level of hunger. We next take damage. So the, this omni shot here is going to do three points of damage to our. Uh, character, we have no way of stopping that, so the gunslinger is going to take three damage, sadly. Now, this is where things get interesting. There's a mid range action on this thing, and it says deal damage to all players in range. When we destroy it, it's going to deal four damage as well, so it's really bad. It really blows up and hurts us, but it also says deal damage to all players in range, and it's a mid range attack. So, mid range essentially is anything really close by. It's that middle one with the yellow there. So we're on the same tile, so this is actually going to affect the mechanic as well. So this is where things get nasty. Uh, we actually, even though the uh, robot is in front of the gunslinger, its attack impacts both characters, which is really bad. Uh, so we've got some damage on her now as well. And now we're finally finished and we can go over to the mechanic's turn. So let's roll our 2d6s to start the next turn see what happens don't want to see sevens okay we got a four that's okay we don't have any fours in play we have a six and a nine so we're okay there uh now we're going to come over here and we're going to draw a card from the mechanic hoping for something good hey a proximity mine so this one says when this player draws a new monster uh discard this card and deal seven damage so that's really good uh, it does say when this player draws though, so that means the whatever player equips this card essentially um, is gonna, It's gonna be based because technically when a card is drawn, which is what it's saying here draws a new monster It goes in front of the character who drew it So basically the mechanic has to draw it and I have to have this equipped for me to be able to get the seven damage on it as a passive ability That's not bad, but I, I don't know. We'll think about it depending on how fast we can get through the rest of them So I'll just put this in the top section for now um, oh wow, we've got two proximity mines. I forgot we even had another proximity mine. That's actually not bad at all. So if that's the case, what I'm going to probably do is, well, we've got the handgun. I think the handgun makes sense. We want to get as much of these guns out as possible. We're going to go ahead and put uh, four shots on this one. So that's not bad. We'll have some ammo ready to go. This one's also mid-range. Oh, actually, that's something I totally forgot about. When I did a mid-range attack with this pistol, it does say mid-range. So I guess my question would be... Oh, but I have to... I pick a tar. I have to pick a target. Yeah, that's a little different. It's a little different. Okay, so that's the differentiator right there, is that my mid-range ability allows me to essentially um, uh, shoot things... I'll show you later how the mid-range works when it's on your character versus when you're seeing it on a monster. On a monster, it's actually going to say something like deal all da damage to all players in range. The cold pistol doesn't act like that. When I'm shooting a target, which is what it specifies a target, I'm targeting this guy. So it wouldn't have hit the robot scout. And we'll see that, how that works later on when it comes down to using these tiles here and stuff like that. So let's just skip past that for now. Okay, so we're going to go over here to the mechanic who's going to start up, and we're going to be going ahead and rolling dice uh, for a spawn to see whether anything uh, magical happens, which I really hope it doesn't. Oh, wait. Did I already do this? Yeah, I already rolled. What am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm crazy here. We pulled a proximity mine card. My mistake. I already put the handgun down. That's one action to do that. Um, so we got that one action tracked. The question now is, do I want to take shots at this robot scout, or do I want to use anything else? Um, the upgrade I have here in my hand, I can use a second action here. It says, place on any weapon, I get an extra damage. That's not bad. Um, but if I take three shots with this thing, that's six damage. And I could also target this guy. But either way, I'm not killing anyone this turn. But this is the nasty one, because it hits both of us. So maybe I'm going to save this for now. And I'm going to actually take three shots with the handgun, I think, I think. And I'm going to deal six damage to this Omni Shot guy over here. So now he's got uh, 10, 14 damage. Not bad. And I can do that because I can target anything within mid-range. And as we know, mid-range is whatever's in the yellow there, and I'm on the same tile. So we're all good. All right, so that's my turn. I basically equipped... I shot three times, so that's all of my actions. I'm not going to bother ticking this up any further. Uh, free actions wise, I think what I'll do is I can trade scavenge cards with another player. So I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, I can't, not this, this is a gear card, so I can't trade that. Scavenge cards I can trade. 
Uh, I can increase my hunger now, is what I'll do next. So, not that I want to do that. And they're gonna take damage. So I'm gonna take damage from the robot scout. Now you'll notice there's no mid range or short range or anything like that on this. So this guy's gonna just target the medic for three damage. So that's unfortunate. So I'm gonna take this two away and replace it with a five and six damage on the medic. Not good. Okay, coming back over to the gunslinger. Uh, we gotta go ahead and roll to spawn our monsters again. Please nothing. Six, are you serious? So we got a six, that is the van. So yep, we actually do have something that we have to deal with here that's really unfortunate. So we're gonna have to go ahead and flip a monster card. What do we get? Uh, oh, another robot. No, another mid-range one too. Reduce damage to all robots in range by one. Oh, so he's basically protecting this guy now. It's even worse. Okay, so this guy's, oh, this is tough. Okay, so basically he's gonna be in front of uh, the gunslinger. That's too bad. Uh, what are we gonna do next here? So we're gonna draw a card first off and hope for the best. Ooh, bulletproof vest, passive, reduced damage by one. That could come in really handy at some point when we get a chance to equip it. Uh, so I'll put that up here. Oh, we got so many decisions to make now. So I basically have two bullets remaining and that's kind of where I'm, I'm running into problems here. Once I'm out of bullets, I can't use this cult action anymore, which is nasty. Now I do have a grenade, which is super handy. Now if I use this grenade in tandem with Red's Rage, which says it is an action, increase all damage, all damage by two until the end of your turn, this could be a perfect time to use a grenade with three robots with a mid-range grenade it would hurt all of them which would be awesome. So I think this is the right time to do this. So I'm gonna actually activate this Red Rage card here, which is increase all damage by two. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use the grenade. This is gonna be my second action. Uh, so the grenade is gonna actually go off and deal three to a target that I choose plus two, so it's five. Now this one here has 10, 14. It's just one shy of being killed off. That's so brutal. Um, Oh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I have to do it. So I'm gonna hit this guy for five, even though it doesn't kill him, because I need to get him off the map. He's doing too much damage mid range. Uh, but I also am realizing right now that it says reduce damage to all robots in range by one. So this would actually end up being instead of a five, it ended up actually being four damage coming through thanks to his uh, bodyguard robot there. So 10, 14, 16, 17, 18, two away. Um. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then it says right here, uh, and up to three other targets on the same tile for two damage each, plus the two, so four damage going towards this guy. This one says reduce all da damage to all robots in range by one. I'm assuming that means to himself as well. So sadly, instead of him being hit for four, he's hit for three. He's able to block a little bit of it. Of it. And he's also going to basically uh, block the one away from this one attack, as well, this grenade as well. So basically the grenade was blocked by um, one off each one of these robots uh, because this is a mid-range attack. Thanks to this guy. He's kind of essentially thematically you can think that he's up in front and he basically took the brunt of the explosion protecting the guys in the back. But still a useful card. No, I could have used it later, potentially killing this guy off first so that the damage did more through. But you know what? You gotta. I, I want to kill this guy off, so I'm doing this this turn regardless. So, spent that. I'm gonna discard it. So that was uh, my second action. I still have two more actions. So now I'm gonna spend another bullet here from my Colt to shoot the gigantic robot. So this is gonna be my third action. Again, it's gonna be an increase of two damage thanks to Red's Rage. So it's four minus one from this particular protection robot is three, which is more than enough to kill this guy off. So finally, we've got the big guy out of our hair. That's awesome. So we're gonna take him away, thank goodness, so he's not hitting both of us anymore. And then I have one more shot. So I might as well take a shot at this guy here, I think, or what I could do is I could put my ranger hat on. Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna do that. Think. Yeah, I'm gonna put my I'm gonna quit my ranger hat as my fourth action. So I'm putting a ranger hat on. Uh, this ranger hat allows me to essentially restore three health, so I get to take three health away from me. Thank goodness. And now I'm gonna have a, an increase of damage going into uh, attacks later on, which is good. Um, now maybe, maybe I should have done that earlier. Let's say hypothetically, I'm gonna reverse time. I'm not gonna do all the actions backwards, but essentially if I had had that ranger hat put on as my first action, 
then did the Gruden. It then did a Red's Rage action. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I could have got the bonus for this. So if I had have essentially uh, increased the damage uh, by using this action, then put on the Ranger's Hat, um, which would have increased my damage again. Then used the grenade, which is the third action, and then shot with my pistol. Yeah, I could have done it all. So technically, let's let's re let's go back in time and pretend I put my ranger hat on first, so that I actually get an extra damage against the robot, and I get an extra damage against the scout because of the grenade. So the grenade would have so that if if you're following he me here, essentially what I would have done instead of what you saw, was I would have put my ranger hat on first. I then would have activated Red's Rage. This would have given me, and then I would have used my grenade afterwards. My grenade gives me three, plus two, plus one is six, minus one. It would be five on this uh, on the guy, but that's that's no longer even here, so that doesn't matter. The other guys, uh, which is the guy that's here left over, uh, it was two damage originally, plus the two, minus one. But really now my ranger hat, because I put it on beforehand, negates it. So basically all that dam all four damage made it on there. So all four damage made it on this guy as well. So the grenade was a little bit more powerful. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So we'll reset this back to one. And I think that's it for my turn. I got nothing else. I'm not gonna choose to discard anything from my hand. I'm kind of okay with what I've got here. But I'm not really happy with the loot the bodies and the tactical leadership. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna discard these two cards for now and I'm gonna look for something else just as a free action. A horse, cool. So action, move up to two spaces, discard to reduce hunger. Cool, that's more useful. Maybe I'll end up using that and I got a bulletproof vest for later. Okay, so that's it for uh, the gunslinger. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, increase hunger to three, sadly. We need to get food. We're gonna have to start scavenging soon now. Um, and I take damage. So this guy is a mid-range attack, so he is gonna hit both of my characters, sadly, and he's hitting for four, which is crazy high. So four damage here, and oh, actually, sorry, four damage, but uh, do, 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 do. no, sorry, I can't block anything there. So that means my poor mechanic is also going to be hit by four damage. Pretty rough. Okay, and that's it. So now we're going to move over to uh, the mechanic's going to go next. So we're going to roll our two dice. This is brutal. This is way harder than the first time. Okay, we got eight. That's a safe roll. Nothing happens gameplay-wise. We have a nine and a six, so we're safe there. Thank goodness. No more robots for now. We get to draw a card. Please be something good. Read the manual. Equip a gear card in front of another player. Draw a card. Hmm. Okay, so basically, this could help me get potentially a proximity mine onto my gunslinger. That would actually wouldn't be bad. Certainly would help me out down the road. But let's see what we can do in terms of taking somebody out here. So... I've got one shot left with the handgun. Not the greatest. Once the handgun's gone, I'm totally out. I'm gonna need to start scavenging. So, <clears throat> let's do... And we already have this silly robot in play who does reduces damage of all my attacks. So let's go ahead and try and find... This would basically make my attack with a handgun one damage, which is complete waste of my, my bullet. It'd probably be better for me to probably scavenge, I think, first. So I'm gonna scavenge this area. Oh, sorry, I can't scavenge the van. I'm still stuck at the van. I can't, I'd have to move in order to scavenge somewhere, which I could do, but then that's the downside. If I move, I'm just revealing another monster and making life harm myself. I really need to clear up the monsters in front of me first. Oh, we've got ourselves in quite the Quite the problematic situation here, right off the bat. Um, geez, this is tough. I'm gonna have to, I guess the only thing that makes sense then is to essentially, um, let's go ahead and, maybe I have to move. Maybe I have to move, maybe I don't have a choice. No, I can't. I can't do that. Um, which one's closest to... Right now, this one's 12 health. This one is 11. I only have one shot with this handgun, and then my gunslinger has a shot where she can make this before damage. Uh, we really need to get rid of this guy first. If I take a shot with this, even if I boost it with an upgrade, it's only 2 damage. So 2, 4, that's 6. It's 
not enough. It's not enough. Um, I could also draw cards as well. So I could draw a card. Maybe that's what I have to do. So I'm going to draw a card as my first action, hoping for them good. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. Okay, so auto turn. Uh, every time you are dealt damage, turn deals that target four damage. That is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Okay, so that was one action to draw it. Absolutely putting this down. So I've got an auto turret there with me now. This is going to cost me second action to get it into play. That was such good timing. What a great card to get. We've got four ammo on this thing. Jeez. This is a passive ability, so it's not going to do anything right now. But when I start getting attacked, it's going to start punching out some serious damage. Uh, well done mechanic. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is so that was two actions. My next action is gonna be to put I'm debating do I put the upgrade on? Mm, yes, I think I think so <clears throat> Trying to add it up in my head here if I do a shot with the handgun is my last uh, my last or if I uh, upgrade the handgun then take a shot That'll be three damage coming through, which one of it's blocked by this robot. So two gets through, that'll be a total of six. Later, if this uh, robot, or I guess it'd be the Rebel Scout that's actually gonna get shot first. So maybe if that's the case, what I'm gonna do is actually shoot the robot Scout instead. But he's more health. Oh, this is so bur brutal, brutal, brutal. Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna upgrade the handgun. That's my third action, and then I'm going to shoot it, my last bullet with the handgun. So this is going to be a th uh, three damage total. Um, so that's, I have to choose which one I want to hit. Technically, it would make the most sense to hit, if I hit him, yeah, it makes the most sense to hit him. So I'm going to hit him. So. Uh, it's 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 a tough call to be honest. I, I I don't know. We could go either way on that one. So I'm just gonna I'm only gonna make an executive decision and go with it. So uh, it's gonna be three damage against him. But uh, thanks to this robot being around us here, he's gonna reduce it by one. So it's only two damage getting through. Still okay though, I guess. So now this guy is a total of uh, six, which is not uh, super super high. So all the actions is uh, are done, and I think that's it for me. Uh, so what's next? I'm going to increase my hunger, which is bad because I need to get out of here and get some food And then I'm going to take damage. So I take damage from this guy. Uh, he's not gonna he's gonna, only gonna affect me So I'm taking damage equal to three from this guy So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just take a two and flip it for a three So we're already up to 13 damage, which is basically half my health already. That's fantastic <laughs> That is super sarcastic. Okay, so um uh, next, that's it. I think that's it. Yep, that's all. Come back over to the Gunslinger. Uh, we're going to roll our two dice. We're going to cross our fingers and pray that we don't get attacked. It's a two. Thank goodness. We don't get any more, any more insanity happening to us. We're going to draw a card. Please be good. Focus shot. Long range. Spend one ammunition to deal one target five damage. Oh, that's so good. Well, I can do a long range shot, but you know what? I don't care right now. I, I need to, uh... I I need to use this right now. I need to get rid of this this robot, and I only have one ammunition remaining. So this is going to be a focus long range focus shot with my Colt pistol. Um, it's going to be an increase of one damage. So it's two damage. Oh, sorry. So let me let me do this in order. So I drew this card. This will now go into my hand. Uh, next up, I'm going to use um, one action, my first one, to increase all damage by two. Then I'm going to use a second action to use my instant focus shot card. This is gonna give me five damage as long as I spend one ammunition. So that's gonna be two plus five plus, um, yeah, and see that's the thing. This is an interesting one. Instant action card, this doesn't stack on top of my Colt pistol. It just says spend one ammunition to deal one target five damage. So the only extra bonuses I get here is the five damage from this particular focus shot, the plus two from the Red's Rage, and the Ranger's Hat. I do not get the deal two damage to a target from the Colt pistol itself. And that might be confusing, but this is a, this is the standard attack with this gun. This is an instant action, long range kind of focus shot. It's different. Um, so it doesn't stack. So this is five, six, seven, 
eight total damage coming through. Minus the one for the shield is seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. That is enough to kill him. So that's awesome. So we were able to wipe him out, even with him being able to block one of the points of, uh, of damage. Good gracious. Okay, so that was that worked out pretty good. I have no more pistol uh, ammunition left. My ranger hat is there. Jeez. Okay, well, I somehow survived. I've used two. I need to get out of here. I need to get moving. Actually, oh, it's just tough. If I move, I expose a tile. And, well, I have to go. I, she's got the auto turn over here for the mechanic. Forget it. I'm going to move. So I'm going to spend an action here to move. And we're going to head this way. So we're going to go this way to this tile, which happens to have a monster, which we're going to have to deal with, sadly. We're going to flip this over. We got the prison. And it says reveal. We end our turn. But we have all different ability to scavenge from multiple decks here. So that's cool. If we enter this, uh, we lose one action. We revealed it, so we end our turn. So essentially, my turn is done. Downside is, uh, <laughs> really bad side of this thing is, a monster comes out right now, which is terrible for us. And it's another one of these guys. So another one of these guys, and this kind of makes sense. He's actually kind of like the riot police and we're near the prison, it's kind of thematic. So he pops up, that's too bad. My turn is over, I can't do anything else, sadly. Uh, I was thinking I might have time to put on like a like the bulletproof vest or something, but that didn't work out. Uh, so that's the end. I don't uh, have any free actions I want to use, so I'm going to increase my hunger to four, which is dangerous. Um, that I'm going to be taking damage, and thankfully, because this guy's here, and he's mid-range, he's going to actually do exactly what he was doing before. You can see his mid-range is going to allow him to affect still the mechanics. So another four damage is going to hit the gunslinger. And then on top of that, four more damage is going to come flying over to her as well. This is really bad. Just getting absolutely pummeled. So now I've got uh, 17 damage on her. I am in, I am hurting right now. Whew, okay, um, that's it. And when I say that's it, I'm like, I'm like hurting bad. Okay, so we're going to move over to the next player, which is the mechanic. We're going to roll some dice and find out if we're spawning any monsters. Five. Thank goodness. So it's nine, nine, and six. So nothing happens. Thank goodness. Draw a card. Give me something good, please. Drone strike. Remove all monster tokens from a map tile. Oh my gosh. That would have been so handy earlier. Okay, this, this could still be really good, though. And I think I need to... Okay, so what I'm going to... This is amazing. So I'm going to use my drone strike right away. I'm not using it against the Rebel Scout because the Rebel Scout um, will get hammered by the auto turn when I get attacked next, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I've run out of ammunition anyway. Um, actually, let's wait. Let's wait. I've drawn that into my hand. I'm going to move. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, oh, and I moved the wrong person. My mistake, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, I should have moved the Gunslinger to here. The uh, mechanic is still here. Um, so the mechanic is now going to move to the prison as well. She's happy to see that she can scavenge multiple places. So she's coming. Oh, no, actually, I don't want to do that because I lose an action if I move to the prison. Ugh, it's the worst. Uh, no, but it's still worth it. So I've, uh, this, this move here will lose one action. That's okay. So I've used one action to move there. I still get the rest of my turn because it's an enter keyword to lose one action. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a drone strike and I'm going to use this drone strike on um, oh, what should I do here I have to move this stuff over a little bit just so I can make some space for discarded cards uh, I'm going to use this drone strike and I'm going to take out this robot here because this is the one that's the most annoying so I can actually help out my gunslinger with taking this one out um, which also gets rid of that protection that he had so that's good so that's my second action uh, third action, I should probably put a proximity mine on myself, but I need to scavenge as well. So I'm going to probably scavenge from the blue deck first. Yeah, let's scavenge from the blue deck for one. Fuel! Okay, so I got some fuel and I can, can I equip this? Yes, I have two and three, so I can actually equip this. That's perfect. Uh, this was an upgrade, by the way, it was instant, so I actually was supposed to put this away after I used it. It wasn't supposed to stay there. So I have two, three, and four. So I'm full up on my inventory for the mechanic now, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted food, really, uh, or something to handle my damage. Uh, but fuel's okay, I guess. Um, 
Now I have, that was my third action. I have one more action. So the question becomes, now this auto turn, I can't activate it. It attacks back after I'm dealt damage. <clears throat> It'll deal four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not enough to kill it. Shoot. So if I can't stop it, tough, tough, tough. Then maybe what I do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to play this card. It's an instant card called. Uh, can this help me? Yeah. Read the manual. Equip a gear card in front of another player mid-range. So I'm on the same tile so I can do this and then draw a card. So basically this goes in here. I, it says equip a gear card in front of another player. So I'm going to equip the proximity mine for my mechanic in front of the gunslinger, which is awesome because if a gunslinger happens to draw a big robot monster, that's going to blow up, which is great. And that's the next thing that's probably going to happen. Um, that would be my fourth action. So my actions are done now at this point. Um, I do get to draw a card as well. So I'm going to draw that card. Weapons check. Increase all player damage by one until the start of your next turn. Nice. So that's going to come in handy later. I like the mechanics cards. They're really cool. That's it for me, for, the, for her. So she's now done. <clears throat> and I'm going to... Uh, increase my hunger level sadly so I'm really 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 getting hungry which is bad and I'm gonna take damage I'm taking damage from this guy so it's three but it only affects me but that's still really bad because well it's just bad oh shoot what am I doing uh, it's three so basically this changes into a five. Oh my gosh I'm at 20 health damage right now that is ridiculous I'm almost dead <laughs> I haven't done anything and I'm almost dead. Well, this is definitely harder than the uh, than the tutorial was. Um, okay, so that's it. And uh, we're going to move back over to the Gunslinger. Okay, so the Gunslinger, taking our two dice rolling, praying we don't get anything that's going to hurt us. We got an eight, so we're okay. That doesn't spawn or do anything. Thank goodness doesn't trigger any of the scenario effects. Whew. Next, we're going to draw a card for the Gunslinger. We got hollow points placed on a weapon. That weapon is fully lo reloaded and does two extra damage until ammo is expended. Nice. Reloading this weapon destroys this card. Cool. So I'm going to play this card right away for my first action, which is going to essentially reload my Colt pistol. That's awesome. So I'm more than ready now. And now I'm going to help out... Um, Oh shoot, I also forgot, sorry about that, I forgot about the really cool ability that my uh, auto turn has <laughs> against the rebel scouts, or the robot scouts. So when I took damage just then to go to 20, I forgot that I have a passive ability on the auto turn that automatically uses an ammunition, and it says every time you're dealt damage, the turn deals that target four damage. We don't have anyone blocking or reducing damage, so four straight damage comes this guy. So his total will be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten damage. He's two away from dying, so I'll take all these away and replace it with a ten. He's very close to death. First action I did with the gunslinger was to put hollow points on it. It's gonna basically stay on this card until I reload it. And it's always gonna be there until the ammo is expended. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of these shots right now, essentially, to uh Shoot, and it's going to be two damage plus an extra two damage is four. Way more than enough. I'm taking out the Rebel Scout and helping out my friend. Finally, we have no robots on us. Thank goodness. Okay, so that was one to put this instant action on, two to shoot. So we have two more actions to go. The first one I do is I'm going to. Um, uh, this is a question that I have to figure out. I might. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to equip the horse as my first action. This horse says, move up to two spaces or discard to reduce hunger of all players by one. Actually, I want to wait on that. I'll wait on that. That could be really handy to help me from uh, starving, essentially. So basically, we're eating the horse, I guess. We're killing the horse off and eating it. That's kind of cruel. Um, so for now, what I'll do is I'm going to scavenge. And I just got to figure out which deck I'm scavenging from because I've got multiple ones to pick from. So I'll go green this time. Classic, empty-handed, immediately discard this card when drawn. Wow, that is pretty much our luck. Um, okay, so then I have one more action to do. Um, I might as well do it again. I'm going to go to green again. Food, nice. Okay, so I have no more... Um, now, this is going to go into my hand now. So, 
There we go. I have food now, which is good. Uh, so now my turn is over. I've used all four of my actions, so I'll reset this. Uh, I don't want to do any free actions <clears throat> at the moment. I increased my hunger to five. Thank goodness I found food. Might keep me alive a little longer. So I'm going to take damage, but there's nobody in front of me, thank goodness. So we're okay. We have a proximity mine, which is there, ready to take uh, the brunt of whatever comes at us from the next robot. So we'll move back over, finally, for the mechanic's turn. Uh, we're going to go ahead and spawn monsters, which I really don't want to do, and really hope that nothing happens, please. Uh, eight. Okay, good. That's a safe roll. Uh, safe roll. Especially we got nine, nine, and six. Okay, so... We're okay, we're doing a little better now, uh, kind of. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and draw a car for the mechanic, please be something good. Jump start a car, May, uh, move any player to any reveal map tile. Cool, good, but not useful at the moment because I don't really wanna go to the bandit camp or back to the van, but that's, I mean, that's good. That would actually be a really quick way of getting back to the van later on, that'd be really handy. Okay, so I have four actions. Um, I can do whatever I want right now. Uh, I've got lots of ability to scavenge and things like that. We're looking for spare parts, remember our main objective here essentially is to collect spare parts to fix the van so we can get out of here so that's kind of the key and I, I can't dilly dally and take too long with that or we could really be in trouble uh, I also want to scavenge because I want to find food so I don't die out here so let's <clears throat> let's do a let's do another action here and we're going to scavenge uh, from the blue deck and I got food okay that, not that great uh, so this is a card that I could use at some point which I'll probably use right away um, so that was one, um, so that's one action used. Uh, now I'm going to probably scavenge again. I'll take from the red deck this time. Antidote, cure all status effects, okay. Exactly what I was looking for, so that's my second one. And I think I'm going to scavenge one more time because there's no reason not to. I'm going to go green this time. Food, this is a much better food card. Okay, perfect. So this is going to tip me up to three. And then for my final action, I'm actually going to spend this food card right now to uh, to eat it, which is going to reduce my hunger by three, so it's going to drop me down to one, which is going to keep me alive much longer. I really need health. Uh, that would be I need some meds badly. Uh, but that's it. That's the end of my turn. Um, so we didn't exactly get everything we needed there, but it's it was okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually trade a scavenge card with another player. So I'm going to give this food to the gunslinger because we're in the same spot. So I'm going to trade this over to the gunslinger so he has the ability to use this because he's going to need more food, I think, than I am because I'm lower, much lower on the scale. Okay, so that's it. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to increase my hunger for the turns. So those bumps to two. Take damage. There is none in front of me and we're okay. So we're not doing that bad. So I think this is a perfect time to stop. Uh, we have covered uh, the basis. Uh, one thing that I kind of regret just now thinking about it was I probably should have installed the proximity mine here on my character for one. But you have to realize too that I have one, two, three, and four currently active. I can't get this proximity mine into play unless I knock something out. And if I was going to knock something out right now, it'd probably be the handgun. But I really want to hold on to that because. The mechanic doesn't have anything except for defensive auto turns, and that's it. So it's nice to have an offensive weapon once I get ammunition. So the proximity mine is going to have to wait for now, and I think the auto turn should hopefully help her. We really need to find meds with her. She's doing really bad. Whereas the gunslinger, if we consolidate all the damage on her, two, four, six, uh, sorry, five, six, seven, eight. So we could really just knock away um, these here for a five, if I can find one. And we can knock these two away for a two. And then that makes it a lot easier to see. But we only have eight damage on her. So she's doing much better. I've been handling things a little bit better. So anyway, we're not doing too bad. Things are going all right. The mechanic's probably the most hurting. And we really need to get some meds for her. Besides that, we have no more enemies in front of us. So hopefully we can move forward. And we finally got a path outside of the van after what looked like an insanely grim start to the playthrough. <laughs> Uh, I managed to breach through uh, the monsters, thanks to that scout. And uh, now we've got an ability to sit in the prison kind of and scavenge as needed. So this might actually be perfect being that the prison's right next to us. We may not have too much need to go elsewhere, but we might kind of explore these two tiles next in the next video just to see what's there. Uh, but I have definitely no need to go back to those monster spaces. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this is helping you learn Maximum Apocalypse. I'm having a blast, even though this is absolutely killing me. Uh, but in the next episode, we'll continue right from where we left off. If you saw anything I missed, let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much. And as always, guys, keep on rolling solo. Yeah.